battle takes center stage in Minneapolis tonight as both teams enter with a chip on their shoulder. A week ago, the Golden Gophers and UMD Bulldogs suffered rare sweeps at the hands of ranked opponents. Tonight, they face each other in front of a sellout 3M Arena at Mariucci crowd. Welcome into the broadcast booth. I'm Sam Ekstrom alongside former Gopher Pat Micheletti. Another rivalry game on tap tonight in a season full of rivalry games. Gophers took on their neighbors to the west in North Dakota a couple weeks back and their neighbors to the east last week in the Wisconsin Badgers and took two games on the chin. Pat, a rare losing streak for the Gophers right now. Yeah, Friday night they, they probably played their worst game in probably five years and you know obviously they weren't happy about it. Saturday night they came back, they competed hard, they hit three punches in the third period certainly could have won the game give a lot of credit to wisconsin they played very well but you know minnesota's looking to redeem themselves this weekend and bob motzko still looking for that magic formula trying some new things with those forward lines again tonight yeah you know he's still trying to find the right combinations you know we can't panic yet it's early in the year you're still trying to find who's going to fit together what what is the right formula for your team to win they're still trying to figure that out it's early plenty of time and a look at tonight's starting goalies presented by Spire Credit Union. That's Zach Stasekull, the senior goaltender with 16 career wins for UMD. His sixth start of the season on tap tonight. For the Gophers, Justin Close, the Kindersley Saskatchewan native, 43 career wins, 11 career shutouts. And Coach Bob Mopsko said he's unchanged by the losses last week. He's as steady as it gets. Well, you know, that, that's the way Justin's been uh, his whole career since he took over uh, a, a year and a half ago. He's got 11 shutouts in his career, and, you know, he's just he's just been terrific. And, and that's what you need. It all starts with your goaltending. You get good goaltending, and then it, it goes out from there. So, uh, you know, he's been a bright spot early for this Minnesota team. Bob Motzko behind the Gophers bench. And Scott Sandlin on the other side. 447 career wins for UMD. Three championships, 11 NCAA appearances. What a tenure as the bench boss for the Bulldogs. Yeah, he's been... You know, uh, undoubtedly one of the best coaches in college hockey that we've seen in a long, long time. You've mentioned it, three championships. Oh, by the way, he and I grew up together and, and played hockey since we were mites. And, uh, and you know, he, he, he's a very, very methodical coach and, you know, coaches his team extremely well. And he said he was coaching with a heavy heart last Saturday, and, and their team has a heavy heart coming into tonight. The loss of former Bulldog Adam Johnson, an on-ice tragedy last Saturday in England. His old jersey number seven hanging behind the Bulldogs bench tonight. He played for them from 2015 to 17, and they have patches on their helmets as well. And Blake Biondi who wore Adam Johnson's number seven, has changed jersey numbers to number 27 tonight. As the Gophers have the puck here in the offensive zone as Pitlick goes to Cal Thomas on the left point, a shot deflected wide. Low height, wrapped the puck around, Thomas played it and kicked it to the corner, Pitlick now. Renzel to the near side, Nelson, he'll wrist one, a block by the captain, low height. And low height at his own blue line will bang one out through neutral. You know, the big key here for Minnesota, and I talked to Bob about this, it's not so much what the other team is doing, it's what we have to do. You know, last Friday night did not hit, did not skate, did not complete good passes. Those are the little things that he wants to see improvement out of his team and a pretty good start to this game on the first shift. The line out there currently, Connor Kurth with Oliver Moore and Brody Lamb as Close covers this one up. They go with Pitlick, Nelson, and Snuggerud as the three on the top line. There's the Adam Johnson jersey next to Scott Sandlin. A lot of discussion this week about Johnson and the life he lived. Gone too early at the age of 29. Yeah, and, you know, family from my hometown of Hibbing, and I know the family very well, and and Davey and, and his wife and uh, just a it's just just so sad and you know it, it hits not only the community of Hibbing it, it, it hits everybody in the hockey world and I don't care if you're a fight I don't care if you're a stick manager I don't care if you're a trainer we're all one family and, and uh, the outpouring by the people it, it's been tremendous but, uh, but what a loss
There was a moment of silence before the national anthem tonight. The Minnesota Wild had a moment of silence, and his NHL team, Johnson played for the Pittsburgh Penguins. They had a moment of applause and stick taps at their game last weekend. Gophers have the puck offensive end. It'll step toward the net. Pressure on Stasekel. Mason Nevers will wrap it around and feed the point. Carl Fish whips one wide. And the Bulldogs will collect, moving right to left. UMD averaging 3.6 goals per game. They've been good offensively in this early season. A 3-2-2 two, and two mark, but coming off a sweep at the hands of Cornell in a road series last weekend where they only mustered one goal. And Genie shot it high. Gathered in along the boards by Joey Pierce. Now to the corner. Kyle Bettens has it kicked along. And Anemi wraps it against the boards, held in the zone. And now behind for Max Rude, the extra defenseman listed for Minnesota tonight. Clark for Chesley. Three-minute mark of the opening period. You know, one of the things that Minnesota had a difficult time with last weekend was their exits out of the zone. As you can see there, they just... Ice the puck, but you know, the, the, the clean, the crisp pass, one pass out of the zone. When you spend a lot of time in your own zone, well, by the time you get to the offensive zone, you're going to be pretty tired, and hence, tough to create any offensive chances. So I know they're trying to be crisper, cleaner, passes on the team, one pass and out of the zone. Quick shot by Ben Steves. Off the faceoff circle, Steves, their leader last season with 21 goals. Four-time rookie of the week in the NCHC. Yeah, Spicer's going to win this crowd right back to him. And Steves, he's not afraid to shoot it. He's gonna, you know, he leads the team in shots, leads the team in goals. And, you know, he's one of the guys that they rely on to do uh, the majority of the scoring for them. And he has. Steves came to UMD. From Eden Prairie High School as Pitlick drives down the right wing. Nelson a shot. Rebound. Score. Gophers lead early. Cal Thomas. And what a heads up play here by Red Pitlick. As you see Cal Thomas get the rebound and put it home, Jackson Nelson takes the shot. Cal Thomas right there to pick up the rebound. But this play was made right here by Red Pitlick. Finds Nelson. Just held the puck long enough. Found the trailer at Nelson. Nelson takes the shot. Rebound to Cal Thomas. No chance for Stace Gall. And the Gophers get on the board first. That is Cal Thomas's first NCAA goal. And, and that play initially started as a two-on-one with Pitlick and Snuggerud. Pitlick realized he didn't have the play across the Snuggerud. Held on. Nelson comes in late, gets the shot. Thomas finishes it. Assist number three for Nelson, number two for Pitlick, and for Cal Thomas, the Maple Grove product, goal number one. You know, I hate to be referring to last year a lot, but but we have to with the team that they had. And, and Minnesota's defense last year was so active. As the Bulldogs drive the net, shot comes in from Carter Loney. Denied by close Minnesota the other way. Yeah, they were so active and they jumped up in the play a lot and and early in the year Minnesota's D were not doing that. We see that there was we start to see it a little bit more against Wisconsin But that time Thomas jumps up in the play gets the rebound and puts it home That's the theme for the Gophers the last five games. That is the fourth Gopher to score their first career goal Oliver Moore Charlie Strobel, Jimmy Clark, and now Cal Thomas as Stasco makes a save, pushing and shoving. Right in front of the students, and they're fired up. Well, listen, this rivalry goes way, way back, and, and you know, they, I remember playing in a lot of these games that were, you know, UMD had some awfully, awfully good teams in my era, and they were 
they were good and they were tough. They were hard games. And there's a lot on the line when these two teams play. Minnesota's last win in this series was Bob Motzko's first series as Gophers head coach. October 7, 2018, Bulldogs have won four in a row and 10 out of 12 as they're offside at the blue line. You know, you mentioned earlier, you don't need scoring, you know, scoring more than you score a lot of goals. Scott had a problem the last couple of years of, of, of his team. You know, he said, we, we, we get to three, we have a good chance to win. They had a hard time getting to three this year. Their power plays at 38%. They're scoring a lot of goals. They're giving up some, but, you know, he, he, at least they're, they're, they're getting more offense out of the group that he has this year. Bulldogs were unbeaten through the first five. Ties against Michigan Tech and Northern Michigan. Wins against Northern Michigan and two against Bemidji State. Hung eight goals on Northern Michigan. Certainly helped the average in that one. Bulldogs potentially a three on two at the line. Matthew Perkins threading one down low for Luke Bast. Couldn't connect. Bast the transfer from North Dakota coming in as a left shot defenseman. Chesley up to the blue line. And he'll shoot one wide off the end glass. Chesley goes to get it. He needs the point. Max Rude, a wrister, clicked away off of Steves. Gophers maintain the zone. Chesley off the corner boards, a ricochet right in on Stayskull. Well, going back to last, last weekend in, in the series loss against Wisconsin. Minnesota had three odd man rushes in, in the first period, right? And they didn't get a shot on goal. You know, and that, you know, they tried, tried to get you cute at times. Instead of just getting the puck on your stick and, and taking the shot, that's something that this week in practice they really emphasize. You get it, you know, you, you take one look and, and you shoot it and, you know, try to create something. But they tried to get a little bit too fine at times last year or last weekend, and it hurt them. Gophers struck very early in that first Wisconsin game as well, if you remember, Pat. And they, gave, and they gave it up quickly, trying to hold this one. A one nothing edge in the opening six-plus minutes. Cole Spicer dumps one in. Justin Close will handle it. Give it off to Ryan Chesley. Minnesota entering, averaging three goals per game. But only five goals combined in their last three. Pitlick down to play. It goes to Nelson as that line tries to click. Pitlick sends it in. Rebound out front. Swatted wide by Mike Kester, making his season debut back from a leg injury. Yeah, it's good to have that experience in Mike Kester, your captain. You know, they've been looking just to, you know, someone to settle everybody down a little bit. And it, it's great to have Mike back in, uh, in the lineup tonight. Bob spoke very highly of his presence. To solidify that defensive core that went over so much changeover from last year. Well, he's older and he, you know, he's been around and he knows, you know, he, he's been through losses, he's been through wins, and, and he's just a, he's a calming sort back there and, and uh, will be helpful with that, the younger D that they have. Worth noting, too, Mike Kester is wearing neck protection tonight in response to the Adam Johnson tragedy that is going to be made available to all Gophers. And Bob Motzko has been a big advocate to get that equipment in the building. Lamb going down, shot by Kurth off the side of the cage. Moore collecting. Middle step, tried to slap shot, swing and a miss. Now a two-on-two. -two. Blake Biondi filtering one ahead for Connor McMenamin. Penalty coming on Minnesota. Space goal goes off the ice. Six on five now. Owen Gallatin in the corner. A touch up by Minnesota in our first power play of the game. And it is a potent UMD power play. Yeah, McMenamin just got by Luke Middlestead. And Middlestead got a stick up just a little Minnesota high player, there. Number and 22 we'll go. minutes high sticking. McMenamin called, played last year at Penn State. Now look at him, he just gets behind. Middlestead there, and as Middlestead was turning, lifted his stick up and got him right in the face mask. First power play for UMD, 38% on the season. 
That is third in the NCAA. Steves has five power play tallies of the team's 12 so far. And he will shoot from anywhere. He's really, really good around the net. Big rebound swept clear by Jackson Nelson. He'll just hang around the net there. And, you know, as the shots come, he'll find that rebound. He's really, really good at that and can finish. Last year, Steves was second to the NCAA in power play goals, and that's exactly what he ranks this year as well with those five tallies. And a 20 to go on the power play. This one shot wide. Hitlick gathers it up. Goes airborne through neutral. That puck hit an odd spot on the ice and stopped. Well, I, I, ice does look a little slow tonight. Aaron Pionk, wild draft pick for Biondi. Sends it in on close. 56 seconds left on the power play and some chippiness. There's McMenamin, transfer from Penn State. That last sequence. Yeah, Pionk just carries it over. Puck goes hard to the net. And Kester did not like Pionk. Getting a little piece of Justin Close there. Let him, let him know. Wolfers trying to clear the end, but Perkins will hold it in, move it to the corner. Fish wraps it around and out. That'll be all the way down on Stasekull. Bulldogs 12 of 31 on the power play offside. Down to 35 seconds left on this 5-on-4. Gophers kill has been good, though they did give up a power play tally in each game against Wisconsin. They had allowed one until that Badger series. And we should also mention associate head coach Steve Miller out with an illness tonight, so he is not at the game, and, and, and he does such a terrific job with the penalty kill, and, and uh, Paul Martin will be... Handling the decor tonight that Steve usually does, and we hope Steve gets better and back behind the bench very soon. Nelson flanked by Nevers, shorthanded. Here come the Gophers. 12 seconds left on this kill. Gophers do not have a shorthanded goal this year. Big check by Jackson Nelson at the Bulldogs blue line. Two seconds left on the five on four. Gophers full strength. And a shot from the right circle ramps out of play from Kyle Bettens, and we will step aside. There's Cal Thomas. Keep the puck, young man. His first NCAA goal. Gopher strike early here in Minneapolis, a 1-0 lead. The first ticket and beverage deal of the men's hockey season is on Friday, November 17th, when the Maroon and Gold host the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Cash in and get a ticket to the game and your first drink included. Get yours now, Gopher fans, at gophersports.com. Cal Thomas's early strike makes it 1-0 Gophers as Gallatin sends it wide. Minnesota trying to snap his first three-game losing streak since December 2019. A rarity here in Dinkytown. Push toward the point, intercepted. Honor Kurth the other way. Kurth playing with Moore and Lamb tonight. He was with Moore and Snuggerud against the Badgers. A feed to Snuggerud, redirected just wide. Sam Renzel, the freshman, he'll wrist one off of Stasekull's glove. Snuggeroo trying to gather it, does a nice job. Around the boards, picked by Kyle Bettens, and out he travels to center. Gophers have looked sharp in the offensive zone thus far. Aaron Huglin going far wing. Lock to the near point, that'll stay in the zone for Chesley. In traffic, rebound just wide from Nevers, back in front, covered by the senior goaltender. Oh, Mason Nevers with a great opportunity, and then right right after that, Brodzinski threw it out, and he kind of faked off a C-stall, and he's able to hold on to that, but watch Brodzinski there, and it just caromed off, and Stasekull has to make a really heads-up play here. Nevers just missed. 
making it a 2 nothing game. Evers still in search of his first goal of the season. Missed some time with an injury earlier in the campaign. Huglin at the blue line. Flicks one over for Nevers, and that'll lead the zone back out to neutral. Pionk for Darian Goats. Back for Pionk, the future Wild. That UMD roster full of NHL prospects. Ten draft picks to the Gophers' 13. Nudged in by Huglin into the blue paint and covered. An offensive zone draw for Minnesota past the 12-minute mark. You know, Sam, it's all about how you respond after after a loss and, or after a couple games. So it, it, and not only as a team, but individually. I mean, there's guys out there that know that, you know what, last Friday, we didn't play very well. I didn't play very well. He didn't play very well. And it, it, it's all about your response. And, and so, you know, when, when Bob saw the effort, and some of the guys that weren't very good on Friday respond on Saturday. And so it's just a, a hopefully a continuation of, of things to come for this team. Shot by Mangini was held. And again, those 23 draft picks between the two teams. Gophers have the edge in first round picks. As you see there. But the Bulldogs, no shortage of talent on that side of things either. Off, battle for taken by Pinanini. Clark going for the leaping catch, couldn't hang on to it. Pierce had to avoid the offside. Will hug the line and flip it in off glass. And Genie shot Karams off to the far corner, picked up by Carl Fish, and out to neutral. Clark feeds the middle. Underneath Pinanimi's stick and back the other way. Dumped in and went through Mangini. No touch for an icing. And the draw back into the Bulldog zone. Well, eight, eight, eight shots for Minnesota, seven for UMD up, up to this point. But there's one thing that Scott is going to tell his team in between periods. We've got to get to the middle of the ice. We get, everything is coming from the outside now. Just get close to seeing everything. On the flip side of that, Minnesota has done a really, really good job of getting, you know, shots in the in the prime areas. Stace Golf has been very good for UMD here in this first period. Go for penalty. They're seconds of the period. They'll go back to the kill. A hook on Pitlick. Just past the 13 minute mark. Minor penalty to Minnesota's number 77. Two minutes for hooky. What's going to happen here out in the neutral zone? Yeah, you know, I mean, that, that's the rule, right? You get your stick under there. Watch is going to lift that stick. It's about the waist. They're going to call it every time. May not like it, but the rule is the rule, right? Gophers had a clean kill. Their first try earlier this period, and they start this one with a clearance. Quinn Olsen brings it across the line, promptly gives it away to Mason Nevers, and he'll swing it deep. Well, that's one, one good area that Minnesota's been really good at is their, is their penalty kill. Nevers and Nelson... Together, most of the year killing penalties. They have that camaraderie and, and they did a nice job in the first 30 seconds of his kill. Here's Lamb, short handed, saved by Stace Gall, and then deflected back toward him. The speed of Brody Lamb with the afterburners. Yeah, and you notice something else about him. He out muscled the UMD defenseman, and that's just due to the work that he put in in this off, su uh, this off summer. And you know, he's a Really, he's got a different body than he had a year ago. Bob Motzko has spoken so highly of Lamb all preseason and in this early season. He said he could see the work and the improvement happening as the Gophers another quick clearance and only 45 seconds left on the power play. Well, you know, the thing about Brody, he, you know, he, he didn't get all the power play time last year. You know, when, when you have Cooley, Nyes, and, and, and Snuggie. Uh, getting the majority of the time, but this kid in high school was a phenom and you know It was just a matter of time You know after he put some weight on and you know their the skill level is, is off the charts And he can shoot it as well as anybody you know in the country so um, 
you know, it, it, it's just his time, and he's shown it early. Got four goals in the first six games. Deflected. Frank pass saved by Close. Perkins couldn't hold it. Back to Pionk at the point. Five seconds left on the five on four. Pitlick will jump onto the box as Pionk feeds Perkins. On the left dot, poke to the near boards. Biondi. Puck struggle there. Still rolling on the boards. McMenamin goes to Perkins behind the net. Back to five on five. Bulldogs 0 for 2 on the power play. Nelson encountered by McMenamin. Flipped over to Renzel. And Minnesota will transition out of their end. Renzel. One on four. A shot on Stays call. Oliver Moore threads it down for Jimmy Snuggaroo. And only killers had to get off the ice. Gophers have their reinforcements now. Middle stat slaps it around the end wall. Snuggaroo taken down. And Dubinsky brought it to the far side. Back up for Snuggaroo out of his reach. And icing with under four to play in the first period. Back to Brody Lamb. Here's that short-handed opportunity. Look at the speed of Lamb, and look at how he uses his left shoulder. And he just pushed that defenseman off of him, went in hard, tried to go low short side. And another great stop by the goaltender, Stace gone. Lamb, draft pick of the New York Rangers in the fourth round. Played for Dodge County at the high school level. He's already matched last year's goal total with four. Long outlet pass behind Kurth and down for another icing. Well, in this period, Bob is 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 tinkering with the lines a little bit. He's got Snuggerud out there now with Moore and Kurth. Started off with Nelson and and Red Pitlick. So I think he's still trying to tweak a little bit, trying to find, you now let's try it this way and try this combination and, and see if anything clicks. It certainly looked like Pitlick, Nelson, and, and Snuggy, you know, who were part of that first goal for the Gophers, were working well, but... Nearly a giveaway out front, and that'll lead to a rush here. Quinn Olsen, who's played 145 career games for UMD's Maroon and Gold. This one dumped in by Snuggaroo. Yeah, and Moscow's been very transparent about it's a process to figure these things out. We're going to figure it out together. Last year, it just fell into place so easily with Cooley and Nyes and Snuggerud and then everything else trickled down from there. This year, they're still trying to figure out that that one scoring line as we've got a big check on the far boards from Fish. Well, you know, one thing that we shouldn't forget, sometimes I forget, every year's a new year, you know, and, and regardless of if you have... 18 guys back or 15 guys back it's still a new year you have different challenges and and this year is 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 really different because you're losing three of your top defensemen three that are in the national hockey league and 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 and, and then you know two forwards in matthew nice and and uh logan cooley who are both in the national hockey league starring so you know when, when that happens you know, you have to reestablish who you are, what type of team you want to be, and how you're going to win. And like other teams in the country, Minnesota is going through that also. We just saw that graphic. Gophers returned over 100 goals of offensive output. Bulldogs returned 73 of their 95 goals from last year. Bulldogs ranked 14th right now. Gophers at number six. Strobel kicks one in. That there by Joey Pierce. Cut off by Perkins, who left the puck behind. Strobel trying to shovel one to the middle. Gather back in by Mangini. Flips one high through the air, gloved down by Thomas. Now Strobel with Clark. Clark trying to get it to his backhand. Beaten to the puck there by Pierce. Held from the point nicely by Pinanini. And Gallatin, though, will circle back with it for the Bulldogs. A minute 45 to go in the opening stanza. Nice job by that fourth line. Get the puck in, hit bodies, get control of it. Nelson, two more. Tape to tape with Snuggaroo. Quick stick there by Dubinsky. 
Jarred it loose back to neutral. Rimmed around the boards by Nelson. Snuggerud will hold the zone. Now we have more on the left wing. Nelson and Snuggerud together. Snuggerud to the middle. Trying to rip one. A block by McMenamin. Angling pass out of Snuggerud's reach. More back for Snuggerud. Couldn't get a handle on it. Chesley. Snuggerud at the point. Wants to bomb it. Tipped wide. Middle stat with a minute to go in the first. Good shift for the Gophers. Nelson twists one in the blue paint. Swept clear by Gallatin. Minnesota will retreat for the puck. They've got 40 seconds left in the first. Out shooting the Bulldogs 11-8. Bettens rimmed it around the wall. Close distributed. Time for a final Gophers rush, but that's out of Brodzinski's grasp and an icing with 26 to go. Stay tuned after the conclusion of this period for our first intermission interview. Minnesota a 1-0 lead over their in-state rival. First meeting in just over two years. Aaron Huglin wins the faceoff. Luke Middlestat racks it for Nevers. Chips it out of the zone. Aaron Pionk fell down and gave it to Brodzinski. Scores! In the shadow of intermission, Brodzinski makes it 2-0. Well, that goal comes... 15 seconds left in the period, and, and did this guy ever need it? Didn't have a great weekend last weekend. You see, he stays with it here. Brzezinski hits the pipe. Puck comes right back out to him, stays with it, knocks it home. They give the Gophers a big 2 nothing lead here. 15.9 seconds to go. And I know Bryce wanted to have a good weekend this weekend. Wasn't real happy with the way he played last weekend. Did get credit for a goal on Saturday night. But this is a guy that really needs to keep going like, like he is. He's you know, a senior. He's played a lot of games, scored a lot of goals. He's a goal scorer, and he comes through. His third goal in the last five, and he's got 49 career goals. One shy of becoming the 61st gopher to hit the 50 mark. What an end to the first period for Minnesota. Brodzinski strikes at 19.45 of the frame. And there's nothing that drives a coach more crazy than giving up a goal in the first minute of a period or the last minute of a period. Gophers get one with 50.9 left in that period. To take a 2 nothing lead. Brodzinski scored 49 of them. Cal Thomas has scored now one of them. And we'll be speaking with him in moments on the bench. Gophers score early, they score late as they try to snap the four-game skid against these Bulldogs and get back on the winning track. Yeah, it was a good, good period. You know, they had, they, had, they had some jump. They, you know, they were supporting the puck. The D were getting involved. They didn't give anything, any, any shots from, you know, from good high danger scoring areas. And, you know, so that was, I think Bob is going to be real happy with the way they played here in this first period. Cal Thomas scored his first career goal at 3-21 of the first period. The sophomore defenseman is with us now. Take it away, Pat. Cal, congratulations on your first career goal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, listen, uh, you know, er early in the season, you know, it, it, it didn't appear to me like the D were jumping up, getting involved in the offense. You jump up in that play, get the rebound, and knock it home. Is that something that you guys have just been implementing, trying to get more involved, trying to get more used to getting up in the play? Yeah, you know, I think it's something that uh, it's part of the game now, so we got to do it. And, uh, yeah, we've been trying to get better at doing that and uh, worked out there. Puck came right to me. Ice seems a little choppy, a little slow tonight. What are you noticing? Uh, yeah, but they're playing on the same ice as us, so we just got to be harder on pucks, I think, and we'll be fine. All right, good period. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Congrats.
two. Cal Thomas, his first collegiate goal, and the Gophers lead 2-0 after the first 20. First intermission coverage after this on Big Ten Plus and Fox 9. Welcome back. First intermission here at 3M Arena at Mariucci this week. A lot of heavy hearts, people thinking about Adam Johnson. Passed away at the age of 29 last Saturday in an on-ice accident playing in England. A former Bulldog and a former Hibbing High School player. Bob Mosco spoke about it before the game. It's on the conversation of everybody in hockey right now, and and it's just a tragic uh tragic uh um you know thing that happened to, to adam and you know and our hearts go out to their entire family in the duluth community and uh it's one of Minnes is a minnesotan you know and and you got a community up in having that's that's really hurting and uh it i know there, there's a whole lot throwing on now on neck guards um you know and, and i think we're gonna have to also take a step back on that i think for sure we can have young kids put them back on right now we're gonna make them available to our players and and uh if we can find them that's tough finding them right now and and they're 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 off the shelf so as we move forward i think it's going to be a major discussion in hockey Pat, this tragedy has hit the hockey community yeah. hard, and especially hard here in his home state of Minnesota. And for you, Pat, I know it's very close to home. He grew up in the same Hibbing community that you did. Yeah, and, you know, Hibbing's such a tight-knit community, and, and like like all the communities up on the Iron Range and, you know, down southern Minnesota and everywhere. You know, the, the great thing is, is, you know, the hockey communities come together. Uh, we are all one. We are all hurting. Um, and it's 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 tragic when you know the family. It, it's even doubly, um, and you know the kid that Adam was. Um, all he wanted to do was be a bulldog, and he became a bulldog. And um, you know our our hearts are are, are broken. And um, you know I, it's just it's a sad day. Our thoughts remain with Adam Johnson's family. the second period in Minneapolis. Gophers and Bulldogs. The goal scorers, Thomas and Brodzinski. Thomas's first of his career. Brodzinski with 14 seconds left in the first period. And you see there. Now check that. We'll get you those replays momentarily as Nelson Feeds it on for Pitlick and now Snuggaroo. Low height enters the offensive zone for the Bulldogs. A shot by Steves. Ramps out of play. Tonight's first period stats comparison brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Proud sponsors of Gopher Athletics. Toyota, let's go places. Yeah, pretty equal across. You know, Gophers 12 to 8 in shots. I look at the face-offs. Pretty even. 13-12 for the Bulldogs. Gophers have not had a power play. Bulldogs 0 for 2 on their power play opportunities. Bulldogs win the faceoff offensive zone. Promptly give it to Oliver Moore. They're a great pass for Connor Kurth. Rolls one towards Stasekal, who holds his ground. And Connor Kurth looking for get his confidence going. Sneaks behind the Bulldog defense. Boney Lamb again. What a beautiful pass. And Kurt just loses control of it. I think he wanted to sneak this in between the pads of Stace Gall. Comes up empty. Kyle Bettens at neutral ice. Benton stays with the puck. Looks back door for Quinn Olson. Olson after it. Far boards. And Justin Close will handle it behind his cage. Renzel now turned over to Olsen. Olsen left the puck behind. And Minnesota will try to counter the other direction. Cal Thomas. For Renzel. Nice nudge for Oliver Moore. Moore! Talk about 
Moore electric speed watch as Oliver Moore picks the puck right up inside the blue line, gives a little fake like he's going to pass it over to Brody Lamb. Instead, just waits until Stiskel moves a little bit to his left and goes over his right shoulder to make it a 3-0 game. What electric speed out of Oliver Moore. And he gets his second of the season. First round draft pick of the Blackhawks. They gotta love to see a goal like that. Gophers fans love seeing a goal like that. What a finish. What well, a freshman. Move, yeah, you move the puck station to station. Quick passes. And Oliver Moore picks it up right inside the blue line. And his speed just blew by the Bulldog defenseman. Put that little fake. He just, he just, with his stick, he just, you know, made Stace Call just, like, hey, am I going to pass it or am I going to shoot it? And Stace Call thought he was going to pass it. And Oliver Moore buries it top shelf. It'll stab a giveaway. Mangini. Good poke check there by Close. Moving out aggressively and the puck trickles down. And that's the first Oliver Moore goal in front of his home fans. They love him here as Perkins stick handles through the circle. And speaking of speed, it's Clark with Pinanini. Clark to the middle. Poked away by Gallatin. Good zone hold by Clark as Pinanini chugs down low. You know, I think the speed of Minnesota is really affecting UMD, especially in the neutral zone. What a feed by Pinanini and Stasco with a great save on Clark. Chesley swats it down for Pinanini. It is very rare that you see a UMD team give up as many odd man rushes as they have tonight. They're technically really, really sound in the neutral zone and in their own end. And Minnesota speed has been uh, been the difference. Stretch pass, Strobel. Cross ice, Nelson. Snuggerud follows the play. Tapped away by Spicer. Bulldogs down three here on the road in the first half of this home and home series. Gathered in by Ben Steves. A wrister from Spicer. Taken by Rhett Pitlick. Nuggerud in a board battle, sandwiched by Bulldogs near his bench. Puck bounding out to center. Steves across the logo, drop pass. And a shot by low height wide. Snuggerud trying to spring Pitlick. Intercepted by Pierce and back in the Gophers end. Snuggerud from the blue line. Angles one point to corner for Rhett Pitlick. Dislodged from him. Pierce gathering up the rush down the right wing. Connecting for Bettens. Run into by Kester, and now Thomas shovels it up the boards. You know, I don't know what it is about scoring goals, but, you know, just the last two shifts of Cal Thomas. You know, he, he scores a goal in the first period. You know, he's making really, really solid plays, confident with the puck, getting it out of his zone. Really good period for Thomas. Three on two gets foiled. Gophers back to center. Launched in. Fish absorbed the check, and now Moore back to play it. Gophers last year, of course, won game from one period from winning a championship as it's held by Stace Goal. Bulldogs last year, 16, 20, and 1. Back to Oliver Moore. Well, I tell you, you know, the kid, you know, we, heard, we heard all about his speed. And what did you do? Now, listen, he's still a young kid, still has a lot to learn. He's been line mates with Jimmy Snuggeru and Brody Lamb, and great line mates to have in, in 5 to 7. And in those. Two goals, five assists. So, you know, Bob is tweaking the lines a little bit tonight. He's trying to see, you know, what works with everybody else. And uh, let's keep an eye and see if uh, he puts those guys back together. Mick Miniman, the grad transfer from Penn State. Goes down and now Hublin. Intercepted by Gallatin and back... In the hands of Rinzel, past the five-minute mark of the second, three-nothing Gophers. 
Rodzinski got one underneath Dubinsky's stick, and he mixes it up with Dubinsky after the whistle. Shove for Mangini. Uh, you know Bryce is into it when he, when he gets when he gets feisty, he's focused, and he's shooting the puck. He gets, a, gets that puck right at the top of the circle there. Wasn't looking for a teammate. Automatically shoots the puck. He can shoot it as well as anybody in the country. And he just continue. He needs to continue to, to use that shot of his. Wham! Wrist one high. We've got a penalty. Is against Johnson. Luke Johnson and the Gophers get a power play for the first time. Well, right off the face off here, Johnson. As Lamb, Lamb gets that, that happened quickly. Right off of the face off before Lamb got control of it. Nonetheless, they'll give the Gophers their first power play of the evening. And, and, and a power play that really needs to, to find itself. And, you know, I was talking to someone the other day about power plays. Well, how do you fix your power play? Well, it's not just one thing on the power play. It, you know, you, first of all, you get out of the zone. Secondly, you got to get passes on the team. Third, you, you got to get control in the offensive zone. You know, four, you got to make the passes crisp on the tape. Five, you got to shoot in the areas that, you know, you're, 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 you can't be, you can't be too cute. So, you know, if one of those things break down, well, guess what? You start over, right? And, and so they're, they're still trying to find, you know, all of those things put together. For the five, the five step Micheletti power yeah. play tutorial <laughs> on sale now. Gophers over their last nine on the power play. Haven't had many opportunities. Only 15 in the first six, now seven games. Bob Motzko did say this week he's a little sore about his team's power play production. Sagarud shooting, deflected out of play. Uh, yeah, and, and, and the thing is, when, you know, when you're struggling a little bit on the power play, well, then you press. And then you, sometimes you try to do it individually. And you get away from everything that you're supposed to be doing on the power play. You know, it's not as simple as get, get it back to the point, take a shot, crash your net. You know, there, there's all of those things involved. And, and so he's just looking for for guys, you know, they, they worked on it this week in a kind of a cadence situation. One pass, another pass, shoot the puck, kind of bam, bam, bam. And, you know, just to get some uh, you know, continuity with, within the power play. Bulldogs on the kill. Haven't been very successful. They've allowed a power play goal in five out of their seven games. Gophers have 40 seconds left on this one. Huglin scrapes it to Kester. Kester first game back from injury. Tees one up. Middlestad had a yawning net. Couldn't get a hold of the puck. He feeds Kester. Huglin. Kester the captain. Middlestad. That's off of Bodner Chuck and out of play. 19 seconds left on the advantage. You know, we go back to last year's power play. You want to talk about last year's power play. First, we'll take a look at this opportunity here. Shot from Kester right at the point. And then wide open net for middle stage. Just couldn't get a handle on it. But if he gets a handle on that, that's in the back of the net. But getting back to last year's power play, well, it's, it was different, right? Because you had Logan Cooley, and he could do things that we've never seen before. And so you think you're out of a power play, and then Logan Cooley makes a play. Uh, that's not here this year. Kester feeds Brodzinski. Deflected puck will be cleared by Spicer. Final five seconds of the five on four, and the Gophers will drop to 0 for 1. Gophers were third in the NCAA on the power play last year. Now three of 16 here in the early season. Small sample size. Holding now behind close and now emerging in a five on five situation. That was Nevers too far in front of the blue line offside. Well, that's a perfect example. You know, you, you never should have an offside when you're entering the zone of the power play. And what do you do is a mistake. Faceoff comes outside, you have to reset, and 
you know, all of those things. So. Bulldogs do not have a shot on goal in the first eight minutes of this period. Gophers 5-0 here in the second. Moore found the back of the net to make it 3 nothing. Hitlick. Dislodged over to Quinn Olsen. Game the line. Line held by Gallatin. Shipped over near Snuggerud and he'll poke it free. Slow roller down ice. The speedy Pitlick takes control. He's got a man trailing. Nelson missed the net. Thomas back toward the net. That ricochets off the end boards. Cal Thomas off of Gallatin. Nelson back for Pitlick. And that flies out of the zone off of Luke Bast. You know, we talked about winning battles. And, and, and Red Pitlick there burst down the, speed, the, the, the sideboards and just literally outman the defense when got the puck, made the play to Nelson, and a good scoring opportunity ensued. Renzel a scoring opportunity. Yeah, in the open ice pack, how many times have the Gophers taken a puck and created a scoring yeah. chance right it, there? We saw it with Lamb in the first period and, of course, the goal by Brodzinski. You know, that, that's what we've been harping on about, you know, battle, 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 and win those battles, and the Gophers have been doing that, you know, all night tonight. Almost looked like an extension of the that, power play there. Another, another takeaway by Kurth. Gallatin all the way down here on close. Approaching the midway point of the hockey game. All Gophers right now. Huglin shoved to the ice. No call. Here come the Bulldogs. Four on two. Perkins. Right wing drive. Gunning toward the net. Carl Fish with the defensive play. Now what a stick by Carl Fish. Now the Gophers with an odd man rush. Lamb tried to dangle it back. Lost for Max Rude at center. Gophers change, dumped in by Middlestaff. Brodzinski has it stripped by McMenamin. He tries to start up a three on two. Perkins for Pierce. Joey Pierce back for Perkins. Scrapes the crease with the shot. McMenamin from the point, launches one wide. Pierce follows through the slot. Big slapper McMenamin. Trying to generate a spark for the Bulldogs. Down three on the road. And I believe that was their first shot of the period. Huglin up ahead. He found Nevers. Nevers couldn't unfurl. Oh, oh. And that's got to be offsides. It is. And Genie trying to stretch it out. Gophers extend their lead to three. Oliver Moore, the freshman feed off, did something phenomenal here. Three nothing Gophers midway part of the second. Goldie's Kids Club is back and better than ever. For only $25 per member, your little Gopher fan receives free admission to most home events and an awesome membership packet featuring a t-shirt, member credential, winter hat, and more. The best value in the Twin Cities returns for all kids ages 13 and under. Learn more and sign up today at gophersports.com. What strings can Scott Sandlin pull here? His team down three, a period and a half left. Well, the M.O. Of, the, of, of, of Scott Sandlin's UMD teams is they don't change. They, they play the same whether they're up 2 nothing, down 2 nothing, 3 nothing, or, or vice versa if they're up. You know, his teams are really, really disciplined in that sense, and they don't try to waver from the script too much. But you got to be careful because they can turn you over quickly and they can score quickly. So uh, Minnesota has to stay on their toes against this UMD team. Chipped out of the zone by Strobel. And poked ahead by Clark. Flanked by Pinanini. Pinanini will pull up. Give to Kester. Wrapped around for Clark. Charlie Strobel scored his first career goal against Wisconsin. Kester wristing one in traffic. Puck loose. Pinanini to the near side. 
wedged against the boards by Luke Bast, and now a struggle for the puck there. Skitters free toward the point and sent out a play by Luke Johnson. Once again, that fourth line doing some damage in the offensive zone. Charlie Strobel gets his first goal a week ago, and you now that gave him a little boost of confidence. You see him hitting people, winning battles down low. He did it against his dad and uncle's former team. Yeah. Snuggaroo to Thomas. Off the end boards, race for the puck, won by Bass. Hit by Nelson. Hitlick slings one for Cal Thomas. He'll hit the corner boards with it. Jackson Nelson. Thomas hugs the line. Sam Renzel swoops around Mangini. Goes behind the goal, centers down the slot. Nobody home. It'll be Cal Thomas going down to get it. Bulldogs right now in an offensive slump. Just one goal in the last two and a half games. A third straight road game, losing two at Cornell. Now here against Minnesota. Nelson at center. He'll grapple with Quinn Olson. Renzel and Thomas play catch. Uh, you know, and, a, and a reason for that tonight is the way that Minnesota's playing. You know, they've had the puck more, and if you don't possess a puck, you're not going to be able to create much in it, and you, you wind up chasing the game a little bit, and that's what UMD's doing thus far, at least in this second period. Good shift there for Loney, trying to win some battles, but it ends up with Pitlick. It's just wide. Bettens, Loney... Stuck in their own end. Pitlick goes after it along with Moore. Benton's winding up with it. The sophomore forward down the left wing. Shovels it toward the far corner. Carl Fish first there for the Maroon and Gold. And he'll wrap one. To Kurth at center. Hammered in all the way. Aaron Pionk awaiting. Goats. Off of Benton's. And Benton taps it forward for Ben Steves, caught from behind by Kurth. Under six to go in the second period, it's Brody Lamb. That got a piece of goats on the way towards the net. Two on two for the Bulldogs, this is Steves. And it leaves play. Benton's product of Winnipeg, Manitoba. Canadian flavor and Minnesota flavor on that UMD roster. 13 players play high school hockey in the state of Minnesota. You know, we should mention UMD is playing without probably their best settlement, one of the best settlement in college hockey, Dominic James. Uh, Great point. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, you know, he, he was Mr. Everything for this team. And, you know, as Scott told me, you know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta find other guys to, to fill that role, but, but just a, a terrific, terrific competitor and uh, sorely missed uh, for the Bulldogs. Yeah, injured his shoulder against Northern Michigan, and shoulders have been the problem for UMD. Yeah. Uh, Kyler Clevin missed last year's shoulder injury. Blake Biondi had to end last year early, double shoulder surgery. And now Dominic James' shoulder costing him his season. Our thoughts with Will Francis, their junior defenseman as well, who has taken the semester off to battle leukemia. He's beaten it once already, and we wish him the absolute best. And he'll beat it again. He's a, he's a tough kid. He's got a good family behind him. And our, our, our prayers are with him. And also with former Bulldog coach uh, Mike Cernich, who was coaching in the era that I played in. And, uh, what a competitor. And, and I know he's fighting hard getting good news um, back in the days of the deck playing against his teams that were you know back then you know from 80 to 84 they were they were as good as anybody in the country Sertich their coach for almost two decades preceding Sandlin a penalty here at the blue line near the Gophers bench 
to sort this one out with Perkins down on the ice. So you want to talk about a time when... Duluth penalty on number 34, two minutes hooking. When the rivalry was at, a, at an all-time high. Here we're going to see the call. And Vinadini goes down. I don't know if he hit a skate. May have been a gift there for the first, but nonetheless, they'll go back on the power play. But, you know, in that time frame, I mentioned how good UMD was, and obviously we were pretty good in playing in the same league. And, uh, you know, it was just the competitiveness and the rivalry between us and UMD was, was just terrific. You, you know, the fans loved it, the players obviously loved it. But some great battles. Dover's power play. In the spotlight for the second time in this game, they did not generate a shot on goal their last effort. Trying to really create some distance here. Already up by three. Here's Snuggerud. Renzel. Brodzinski trying for goal number 50. This wide. Yeah, that's one thing you cannot do on a power play, especially if you're on that flank. When you shoot the puck, it's got to be on net because if you miss the net, as we just saw there, the puck is going to leave the zone. you got to reset and start over. About a minute to go on this 5-on-4 from Minnesota. Oh, for their last 10 with the man advantage. Pierce. Encountered there by Pitlick. He's been working really hard in this game. Brodzinski, Pitlick, tried to center. Instead, a theft by UMD and back out to the logo. Dumped in by Snuggeroo. Brodzinski glides to it in the corner. Enveloped by Bulldogs, but Nelson got it free for Kester. Snuggeroo, left circle. Nelson, back for Kester, left point. 20 seconds left on the power play. There it is. Snuggeroo! With the Snuggy Snipe. Yeah. That one sailed high. That's what they were trying to set up. Get the puck moving from the right side back to the middle of the ice. He set Snuggerud up for that one-timer, and he just missed. Power play will expire on the Gophers. 0 for 2 now in the game. Under 3 to go in the second period. Bodner Chuck. Genie drops it for Goats. He'll fly one. Cross the ice. All the way down deep into Gophers end. Contact there by Kester. Mangini passing for Jack Smith. Pickpocketed by Nevers, and he has it taken by Mangini. Bodner Chuck off the end window. Flatters down here on the near side. Nevers out of the zone. Gloved down by Goats. Huglin gains the line. Huglin has one hop off the end wall. Shot now to the far board. Shot by Thomas. Deflected back to the far wing. Spicer. Up for Biondi. Cal Thomas first to get it for Minnesota. Huglin from behind. Justin Close with inside of two minutes to go in period two. Still just one shot on goal generated for the Bulldogs in this period. Good keep by Clark, and Clark will hustle. He's got Pennanini going down the middle. Good recovery defensively by Bast. Another excellent keep by Thomas. Like you said, Pat, Thomas seems to be propelled by that goal he scored. He's had a really nice game. Oh, great play at the blue line to keep that puck in. But, uh, listen, Minnesota's just out working UMD right now, especially in the offensive zone, beating them to loose pucks. You know, when you when you do that, then, then you can start executing your offense a little bit. Exactly what Minnesota's been doing, you know, this whole hockey game. As close makes a second save the period. Has not been busy in this period. No, and, and you got to credit Minnesota in the, de in the defensive end, too. On, on a, quickly, they close on people. That time, the shot comes from Carter Loney. Nobody in front of him. Easy for Justin Close. And, and, and 
And how about Justin Close? So, you know, in the first period, some of the saves that he made, it just looks effortless for him. He's always in good, always in good position, always calm, doesn't leave any rebounds, and, and that's certainly going to help your hockey team. Face off, struggled for, now taken by Lohite. Minnetonka product, low height, shovels one to the near side, goats at the point. Back behind, low height, cut off by Renzel. Lamb with the hand. A hand pass, 48 seconds on the clock. Now you got to be smart here, 48 seconds, you want to get out of this period. If you're Minnesota, up by three. UMD, on the other hand, going to try to generate something that will give them some spunk in the third period. Bettens working down low. Bast. Near wall. Down for Bettens. Battling with Moore. Check applied by Fish. He's been physical in this one as Kurth brings it to center. You know, when you, when you don't get outnumbered in your own end, uh, you know, you're, you're going to come up with a puck. And in Minnesota there, you know, two guys right next to each other, supporting one takes the body, the other guy gets the puck, boom, they're out of the zone. Really good defensive play by the Gophers here in the second period. You know, Mike Kester no, is wearing a neck guard tonight. They'll be made available to all Gophers as Sonderu yep. tees one up, max velocity, and Stayskull closes the door. Well, we know how Jimmy Snuggler can shoot the puck. 2,500 shots a week he takes, and he gets that right in his wheelhouse. And Stayskull right there to make the save. Good angle for the goaltender. And he's super slow mo to even see it. Yeah, and, it, and, and quite frankly, from where Jimmy shot that, you know, it was right out at the blue line and gave plenty of time for the goaltender to react to that shot. No one screening. Makes an easy save. There we go. Third penalty of the period on the Bulldogs, and this one will likely stretch over into the third. Yeah, not a good penalty there by Owen Gallatin. Eight seconds left in the period. You know, you stop moving your skates, and what do you do? You pull on somebody, and Red Pitlick, on the other hand, made him, made him work, and you see that stick go right up high. Instead of just, and, you know, one more stride, right? One more stride, he takes him out. No damage. Stop skating. What goes up? The stick. And Gophers will start the third period on the power play. Oh. Or maybe or catch maybe it not. before the third period. A great chance before the buzzer. And they will carry over almost the full two minutes. There's a frustrated coach right there. We saw his look after that Gallatin penalty. And, and this, these two teams had kind of an example of how fast things can change. You know, Gophers were riding high at 3-0. You know, they lost three. They had to make some adjustments. Now, uh, in some turmoil here are the Bulldogs. Yeah, and, and listen, uh, you know, the Gophers came ready to play tonight. You know, they're, 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 they're winning battles. Uh, they're, they're good in the offensive zone. They've been really, really good. Not giving UMD anything. In, in the defensive zone and you look at you know we looked at the shot chart in the first period and everything was to the outside and this period two shots on goal they allowed but you know when you support the puck when you move the puck when the when the passes are on you know good things are going to happen and we saw what oliver moore did you know, we're going to talk to him here in a second but um you know just a really really solid period for the gophers Freshman Oliver Moore's second tally of the season. All right, that was ridiculous. <laughs> talk, talk me through it. I want to talk you through it. You you came down. You saw you saw Brody Lamb yeah. off to your right, right? Yeah. But then, I I, but then I saw your stick. You just moved your stick a little. Goaltender move. Bam! You went upstairs. Yeah, I think that you know that, that play obviously a nice shot by me, and I think it has a lot to do with line mates Connor Kurth. Carl Fish gets it out of the zone. Yeah. Connor makes a nice play and. 
I told Brody driving the backside and opened up that shot for me and but honestly, nice here on the board there. You know what I've noticed tonight is that you guys are shooting the puck. You're not trying to make that pretty play. Yeah. Like last weekend, you know, it seemed like you guys are trying to get you cute. Tonight, you're getting in those spots and you're shooting. Yeah, yeah, I think that's for sure. I think, you know, we're playing a simpler brand of hockey, a lot harder. And, you know, we're getting more shot opportunities, I think, too. And it's opening up a lot for us offensively. How are you starting to feel in, 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 in playing college hockey? You get more comfortable each game? Yeah, I think for sure. I think, you know, it's, it's a process coming into college, playing in these big games, rivalry games. And, you know, I feel like I'm getting a lot more comfortable every shift, every game. So it's been nice. All right, great stuff. Thanks, Ollie. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Yep. Gophers in control through two, a 3 nothing lead, and they pulled the Bulldogs to two shots on goal in the second. We'll go over our stats and highlights after this Big Ten Plus and Fox 9. Three nothing Minnesota through two at three and Marina at Mariucci. Gopher men's hockey returns to 3 and Marina at Mariucci on November 17th and 18th when they host the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Get your tickets now at gophersports.com. Let's look around the college hockey scoreboard, some Big Ten action, some NCHC action, and top 20 scores blow out there. Michigan State over Ohio State. North Dakota, number three, falling. And a great one there between Michigan and Wisconsin. The team that swept Minnesota moved into the top five. Now putting together a representative performance against a very good Wolverines team. They're going to be the sleepers in the Big Ten this year. You see number one Boston College hanging on against UMass Lowell. They'll likely keep that ranking. Minnesota trying to get back in the top five. They got knocked out of the top five for the first time since the 2021-22 season. Let's get to our second period highlights. Gophers adding a goal in the second, and let's actually go back to the first period. Goal number one, courtesy of Cal Thomas. His first collegiate goal on the rebound pack. Yeah, that was, you know, I'd love to see him jump up on the play like that. Great play by... Hit like and there you're going to see the goal by Bryce Brodzinski. Just stays with this rebound. Takes the shot off the post. Stays with him. I'd love to see it. He's a goal scorer. That's what he should be doing. And then this third goal was just magical. Oliver Moore with just great speed. Little fake. Goes short side. Bar down. Give the Gophers that 3-0 lead. And that's where we stand. Heading into the third period. Thomas, Brodzinski, and more the three lamplighters for Minnesota. Third period next on Big Ten Plus and Fox 9. 3 nothing Gophers starting the third period. Sam Ekstrom and Pat McLeany with you. Tonight's stats comparison brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Proud sponsors of Gopher Athletics. Toyota, let's go places. Yeah, Minnesota dominated the second period, obviously. Controlled the puck. You know, eight to two shots on goal, nine scoring chances to one four for UMD. But it, you know, it was all about you know UMD chasing the puck, Minnesota having the puck. In a really good period. This period critical for UMD in terms of trying to get some momentum going into tomorrow night. They'll be up in Duluth tomorrow night for the series finale, and, and you know they they want you, you want to feel good about going into into Saturday night, right? Win, lose. Whatever, and, and UMD's going to have to try to do that. Minnesota, on the other hand, keep on playing the same way that you're playing. Carry it into tomorrow night. Scott Sandlin said he wasn't thrilled with the way they handled the road environment at Cornell. They've been a little off their game tonight as well, and they will start the third period on the penalty kill. Gophers with almost the full two minutes, but a giveaway there to Quinn Olsen. He'll play keep away. Bodner Chuck. And on close, he'll set it down. Gophers still have about 75 seconds on their third power play effort of the game. They've yet to get a shot on goal on the power play. Middle stat glides in. Loops it for Kurth. Near side corner, splits through Bulldogs. Connects with Brody Lamb. Oliver Moore down low. 
And his pass for Kester Arendt and down all the way back on close. You know, the, the key to a power play, it's a five on four, four on three, whatever you want to say. You want to create a two on one situation, an odd man situation. That's how you break down a, a penalty kill. If you allow that, that, that penalty kill group just to stay stationary in a four man box, um, you know, it's going to be pretty tough to, to create anything, and, and you want to create havoc. That's why, you know, I always say get that first shot on goal, and then things loosen up. You know, there's, you know, you got you to find the puck. Everyone's scrambling for it. Renzel can't hold the line. Gophers power play had a good start to the year against St. Thomas in their opening series. Over their last 11 now, and six seconds left on this power play. He'll drop to 0 for 3 as Snuggaroo battles with Bodner Chuck. He'll poke it past the line and Chesley on the logo. And another power play without a shot on goal. Maybe one. That's the two minute mark here of the third. Bulldogs need something to get their engines going. Just two shots on goal in the second period. Low height. Shot blocked. Lowheight's grandfather, worth noting, the great Bill Goldsworthy of North Star's fame. Tap there by Spicer. Cross ice Bast. He'll shoot. Good block by Rude, the freshman. Gophers poised out of their zone. Huglin starts the rush. Huglin the feed. Oh. Caught from behind there, Blake Biondi made the play. Steves, Biondi, zings one on close, save made. Middle stat gives chase. Forced one away, intercepted by Biondi. Steves centering, sticked away by close, hammered back toward the net by Biondi. Now battled for in the corner, and Luke Middlestat. To Brodzinski off the window and flutters down at center. Comes in by Jack Smith. We've got a slash yeah. away from the puck. Yeah. It looks like Brodzinski, as he was going to the bench, laid the lumber on a bulldog and unfortunately right in front of the referee. Will give the Bulldogs another opportunity to try to get on the board. Another look. Now there, there's Strollo. There's Brodzinski. Ray, I didn't, didn't really see the slash. Or the high stick kind of collided with the UMD player a little bit. Bulldogs have generated four shots on goal on their two power play efforts. The number three power play in the country gets a third chance here early in the third period. Wow, they're going to look look for Steves down low where he's so dangerous. Gallatin, high slot, low height. Gallatin at the line. Cole Spicer, rim of the circle, a tip on net by low height. Justin close the cover. There again, Justin Close just holding his ground, very calm, finding the puck. That shot is going to come right from the top of the circle. Spicer throws it on net. And I think that was Loney down there trying to whack away at it, but there's Justin Close there just calmly covers up and... Now, I, I'm plugged in on Twitter, Pat McLeady. I saw it. Oh. Your big prediction about Justin Close this year. Uh, you like that, huh? Well, I just I just think, you know, with the way that he's played and the way that he's playing now, I, I, I just think he feels really confident. And, yes, I do think he will. And I won't tell I mean, you. you got to say it. I'm not saying it. Pat Micheletti predicts Big Ten Player of the Year, Justin Close. Correct? That is correct. I'm not, I'm not misrepresenting that, that you. you are not. No. Maybe I should have said that 
you were, and just in case <laughs> it doesn't happen. But no, I I, I think uh, you know he's proven he he's just he was so good all last year, and you know he just he just has that demeanor about him, and you know it really helps out. You know, and he and he and he talks a lot to his defensemen, like all goalies should. But he just it's it's a calming influence on on that back end, and uh, you know has been really helpful to these young guys. Still trying to repel another 10 seconds of power play time. That'll get the job done. Brody Lamb the length of the ice. And if you're a goaltender in his position, fifth year senior, and you're trying to stop a losing streak, he's done everything that you would want a goaltender to do. Hasn't been tested too much. Just faced four shots on goal since the first period. And the Gophers are three for three on the kill. There's an icing. You know, and, and, and the thing is, let's, let's not forget, to, if he does go on to be the Big Ten Player of the Year, he will have earned it. He doesn't have Brock Faber. He doesn't have Jackson McCormick. He doesn't have Ryan Johnson back there. Three guys that, you know, are in the National Hockey League again. And, uh, and you can just tell tonight, for example, his defenseman. You know, not panicking with the puck. They're getting it. They're making the correct play. You know, it certainly helps to have Mike Kester back, senior captain. But, but that's all because of, of the of the communication between the younger players and and, and Justin. And you know, he does uh, such a good job at that. And maybe no coincidence either. You get Kester back. No goals allowed so far. Good results to have your senior captain back in that decor. Yeah, it's good to have Mike, it's good to have Mike back. And you know this. Listen, you know, they're, they're up three. He doesn't have to play a ton of minutes tonight. But, you know, you know, coming off that injury and, you know, game by game, he'll get better. And that, listen, he's a big part of the power play, too. And, and he hasn't had many reps on that thing yet. So that will be uh, interesting to continue to watch as the season goes along. Down the middle, Pitlick, pirouettes at the point as Kester from the dot shot blocked. Out comes Loney, a three-on-one with McMenamin over to Benton's, missed the net. Great scoring chance for the Bulldogs. Hitlick trying to get free the other way, met there by Dubinsky. Yeah, Kester took the shot, it, it got blocked, and he continued on around the net, and then Pitlick lost control of the puck, and UMD's going three-on-one the other way. Olsen down the middle. Bulldogs can't get it on goal. Here's Oliver Moore shielding the puck there at center. Flings one into the far corner. Yeah, it's a really smart play by Oliver Moore. Knew he didn't have anything. You know, made a little spin at the at the uh, at the red line and just dumped it in. Sometimes you have to you know fight another day, right? You don't have to play. Don't force it. Quinn Olsen, two career goals against the Gophers. There's an offside past the seven-minute mark of the third. There's that three-on-one look we just saw for Minnesota Duluth. Yeah, yeah, you have one guy going hard to the net here, and, and, and I don't even, yeah, he just didn't get the shot off that he wanted to. That was Kyle Benton's. And that was Kester hustling back yeah. into the play and maybe altering that shot, too. Yeah, if we get another look at it, Kester really he went behind the Bulldog net and skated back. That, that's what Bob is looking for. You know, that again, that compete level, and, and that's what uh, Kester did on that play. Otsko said that Kester just settles down the other defenseman when he's on the ice. Has that calming effect. Very much the same way he talks about Justin Close. Yeah, and it's good to have two, you know, when you have two veterans who have been around a long time and played a lot of games. It's it's so helpful. Lamb broke his stick meanwhile. He had to get to the bench. Chesley across center. And Anini left it for Hugelin. Middle stat. Moves through the circle on his backhand. Didn't have a passing lane or a shooting lane. Now back to his forehand. Toward the net in traffic. Blocked down. Darian Goats, the Hermantown product. Over to Johnson. Point to corner. Mangini. Back on his skates. Has Bast. And Bast leaves the zone on the pass for Bodnerchuk. Leaving 
Making his way forward, Luke Middlestat, the sophomore, recently drafted by Montreal. Now a board battle on the far side. Puck skitters free. It's Bettens giving it away and swinging wide is Bodnerchuk. Rimmed it around the boards. Bettens absorbs the contact. McMenamin met there. Bass will try to hold the zone, pinching in on the far side. That's the nine-minute mark of the third. Arister from the point. Didn't reach the net. Oh, up ahead is Pitlick. They didn't see him or didn't have the lane to get it to him. Now he waits for Strobel. Clark follows. Clark Pitlick hit the post. After all that, Pitlick still got the look. And here's Renzel. He hit it too. Two pipes in a row for the Gophers. Renzel feeds Strobel. Clark now in the corner. Watched by Bast. His pass hit Bast. Strobel behind. Finds Pitlick. Fish off the end boards. Follow up. Clark back in front. They score. What a shift. Brett Pitlick. of zone for about three minutes working they've had about three or four good scoring opportunities before that hit two pipes and this time red pitlick right in the slot area gets the pass from charlie strobel makes no mistake and puts it on and stayskull appears to have been injured on the play the goaltenders being helped off the ice we'll see what we can detect here as pitlick finished Boy, really tough to yeah. tell. I don't know. If, obviously, his I don't know if it's a groin or a knee, but boy, oh boy, that is a big blow for the Bulldogs. Seemingly innocuous play, didn't get barreled into, and working his way down the tunnel. Yeah, he's, he's in a lot of pain. Yeah, I saw him going down the tunnel. Matthew Thiessen will back him up. The fifth-year senior goaltender. Drafted by the Canucks back in 2018. He'll take his place in the crease. One and one record so far this year. He was in then against Northern Michigan and in the 3 0 loss at Cornell. We go back to the goal. If there's one clip that Bob is going to show them tomorrow, it is this, this entire shift. You see Strobel working down low and. Uh, you know, it doesn't look like Stacey Hall got, got hit at all. I don't know if, it, if, if, it, if his skate got caught in a rut and he moved. You know, hopefully he's going to be okay. But that shift by Minnesota, what was it, two pipes or three pipes? Two pipes. Two pipes. And it all started with Pitlick being left alone <laughs> at the blue line. And there was a sequence in there where... <laughs> Where Pitlick was slamming his stick down. He wanted the puck so bad. Well, he eventually got it. Beautiful play by Charlie Strobel. And put, Pitlick put it home. Pitlick's done a little bit of everything in this game. He deserved that one, certainly from that shift alone. It, you know, he, he really has. He's, he's played with a lot of energy. He's made some very, very good offensive plays. Thiessen pressured immediately. Curved with a backhand and a pile up in front penalty Bulldogs and that'll send us to a break as Thiessen faces the rush right away Hitlick makes it 4 nothing Minnesota on cruise control in Minneapolis Low height in the box for a cross check for the Bulldogs. They've lost their starting goaltender. And there's the new goaltender, Thiessen, pressured immediately having to stretch. Oh, yeah, the, the double cross check to the neck area of, of Connor Kurth, who was right on the door. But, you know, Minnesota's still buzzing, right? They, they, they get the fourth goal. 
you got a line on the bench saying, hey, it's our turn. And they go out and, and have a great shift. And that's what you want to develop. Shift after shift after shift. Follow it up with another good shift. Minnesota did that. And draws a penalty and they'll go on a power play. A power play which they need. They need, they, they need to get some cohesion here on this power play that we haven't seen tonight. If there's one area that they that, that, that hasn't been good tonight, it, it's, it's been the power play. The streak now up to 12 fruitless power plays consecutively. Gophers over three in the game. Nelson across the line. Watched by Bodner Chuck. This one moved to the point. Held oh. in narrowly and Renzel then can't keep the puck inside the line. Gophers will regroup two thirds of the way left in this power play. Leading by four. Snuggerud gained the line. Lamb. Down to the corner. Hitlick hops over Snuggerud's stick, leaves the zone, and shorthanded. And Genie cut off by Snuggerud. He'll re enter, splitting through Bulldogs. Taken down, nothing called. Goats rims it around and out. And Genie down by four, trying to get something going shorthanded. Instead, they've got Clark all alone. Up the wing, Clark waiting for some help. Dislodged up ahead again to Mangini. Mangini's shot off to the left. Bulldogs have one shorthanded goal this season. And, and to me, with, with Minnesota, you know, they're having a hard time getting the puck in the zone. And it's not so much what UMD's doing, it, it's kind of Minnesota trying to force everything. And, it, it, you know, things are it, it just kind of like walking right into it. Brodzinski. Back door between the legs past Clark. They'll feed Kester. Six seconds left on the five on four. Low height set to leave the box. Power play expires. Blast by Kester. Thiessen makes the save. Well, that's better. You move the puck. You get set up. Get the shot. Get the rebound and, and, and try again. Another tee up that time for Brodzinski. Well, that would put the icing on the cake, though, if Kester could put one in <laughs> in his return here in front of the home fans. Now back to even strength. Low height, cross ice, handled by Perkins. Knocked away. Maybe a rush for Brodzinski, who's got a goal in this one, but no, denied, and low height gets it back. Yeah, Brodzinski read that awfully well. Saw the pass coming across, intercepted it. Gets the puck out of the zone. Gophers were offside there at the line. These teams will play tomorrow night at Amsoil Arena. Bulldogs feel like they just need to be propelled a little bit by some home, home crowd support after three consecutive tough ones on the road. Potentially losing by three or more in all of those games. You know, they, they need a goal. You know, they need they need to, to feel good about themselves. You know, they start off the year with, you know, House of Fire scoring goals, and it's dried up a little bit as of late. But nonetheless, you know, you, you get one, and you start, and everyone starts feeling a little bit better. And, you know, tonight they just ran, they, they ran into a team that was just, you know, ready to play tonight in Minnesota. We'll have a neutral zone face-off here, just outside the zone. Gallatin fires it in. Round for Thomas, now Chesley. Gallatin, just inside the line. Sends it missling wide. Then Steves gathers it in. Gallatin to Bast. Met there by Strobel. Whistle for something away from the play. Oh, a player down. That's Steves, and it goes from bad to worse for the Bulldogs. Go for hockey at 3M Arena at Mariucci is the perfect family outing, and the Cub Family Fort Pat makes it possible for all of Gopher Nation to attend. Take advantage of this family-friendly package that provides four game tickets, four box candy, packaged snacks of popcorn, and four beverages, plus each package provides $5 off, $50 spent at Cub. Get yours now at gophersports.com. And that's the last image that Bulldogs fans want to see. Down by four, you've lost your goalie, and now your leading scorer in pain. 
Yeah, they can ill afford to leave to lose a player the caliber of Ben Steves. Steves' brothers both played for Notre Dame. His brother Alex in the Maple Leafs organization. And, and, and this kid knows how to score goals. Strobel tried to twist one in front, interrupted by Peon. Steves left Bedford, New Hampshire, playing junior hockey and found his way to Eden Prairie High School for his senior year. Tough night for Sandlin and his group. Still just four shots on goal for them the last two periods as Steves has to work whatever it is out of his system. You know, one, one thing about Scott Sandlin, I, I remember having a conversation with them the year they won their second when they're back to back. And I and I had asked them at Christmas time and they were they were in first place in the league and you know I thought they were rolling, right? So I talked to him and I said, you know, things are going pretty well. He says, We're not there yet. I'll let you know when we are. And you know, I, I saw him at the at the at the Frozen Four that year and he said, Yep, you know, we're, we're there. We're, I don't know if we win it, but we're there. And and it's only November and there's still plenty of time and you know he's he doesn't have the horses obviously that he's had in the past but still you know with the style that they play you know they're going to be awfully difficult to beat come january february and on yeah you talked about how they're very consistent in their approach from period to period yeah. game to game and, and for them it's about being ready in march and april play the best hockey and then you know in, in 2011 2018 2019 they didn't necessarily go in with the best record the best seed no. in those tournaments they were underdogs in several instances and played the best hockey yeah. in that tournament yeah it, it, it's all about you know being ready at the right time and and sure of course you want to win all those games in november december and they're all important but it, it's more about are we ready come playoff time you know, is our penalty kill, is our defensive structure, is our power play, are we getting good goaltending? All of those are, are so key, and, and he does such a great job preparing his team at that time of the year. Nelson wrap around, tipped wide, Pitlick going for number two in the game. Here's Kester, shot blocked, back to the middle, Snuggerud couldn't drag it to his backhand. Two on one formulating, Olsen looking for Loney. Scores and spoils the shutout with under four to play. Well, that's certainly what the Bulldogs needed. Carter Loney with a nice move. Odd man rush. Minnesota lost control of the puck. Minnesota had a good sequence down at the other end. Lost control of it. Two on one. And Quinn Olsen with a nifty pass here to Loney. He goes forehand backhand and beats Justin Close to make it a 4-1 game. Right off the draw, Connor Kurth trying to get it back. Poked away by Bodnerchuk. I did my part there, Pat. I was very careful not to mention the shutout. Yeah, you did be well. Because I, I was impressed. He is chasing the team record two off yeah. the Adam Wilcox, Kellen Briggs mark of 13 career shutouts. He's at 11. And he was four minutes away. Yeah, there's nothing. You know, Snuggy was, was, was going hard on the pocket and trying to get it over. And just lost control of it. UMD goes down on a two-on-one and executes and gets their first goal of the game. This one jarred free to Kester. Earth to the boards. Kester flings it off a body. Here's Biondi. There's Steve's back on the ice. Really good sign for UMD. Down by three, we'll see if they pull Teeson or if they need to see another go in before they think that way. Just their fifth shot on goal, that tally by Loney since the first period. Loney's first of the year, eighth career. 
Given away by Bettens. One-timer, Clark. That was repelled by Pionk. Renzel for Thomas. Far side, Strobel. Some really wonderful individual performances tonight for Minnesota. Good team effort collectively. Yeah, I, you know, for me, it was it was noticeable, the guys that maybe didn't have a great weekend last weekend. And, you know, you could just see the, the effort was there, the battles that they won. You know, it certainly wasn't a perfect night, but but you have to be real happy. I'm sure the coaching staff is, is, is pretty happy with the overall effort tonight. Here's our play of the game brought to you by your local Kia dealers. Visit Kia.com to discover movement that inspires. Well, that's the play of the game by Red Pitlick, but he had about three or four of them tonight. Excellent play by Strobel behind the net. Pitlick in the right spot, and he makes no mistake putting it in the back of the net. Middle staff from the point, snuck its way in on Thiessen. Thiessen facing some pressure here. He may be called upon to be the starter tomorrow night as he inches out of his net. Looks like they're going to pull the goaltender with under two minutes to go. Gallatin off the end boards, six on five. Bulldogs trying to make this interesting. The big Carl Fish pressed up against Lohite. Along the boards, Nevers rolls it ahead. Brodzinski takes the puck. He's got number 50. Talk about the effort of Mason Nevers. He did a good job of getting the puck out of the zone. And Brodzinski, when he sees an open net, all of a sudden he turns on the Jets. And he's not going to miss that one. And as you alluded to, his 50th career goal as a gopher. His eighth career multi-goal game. 50 goals. 38 assists in his 153rd career gopher game. And if Brodzinski stays healthy this season, he could break the team record set by Larry Olam for games played. He's shooting for 182. Another cool accomplishment on a great night for the University of Minnesota. 50 seconds left. There's now a shoving match in front. Close. Saw that puck. Smith and Chesley going after it right now. And now Minnesota will break out. Strobel. Well checked away by Pierce. Half a minute to play. Strobel down low. More tight angle. Save Thiessen. Minnesota had a pretty complete effort at North Dakota as well, but this is right up there, one of their best of the season. Behind Johnson, one last centering feed. Gallatin bounces one through the slot. Gophers just need to glide this one and bring it to triple zeros. A convincing Minnesota victory. And Bryce Brodzinski notches two. Justin Close with win number 44. Uh, you take the overall picture, right? And, and things that you wanted to see out of this team tonight. Winning battles. Better passing. Shoot the puck a little bit more. Now, they're probably going to look at it and say, you know what, we still miss the net a little bit too much, especially on the power play. You miss the net on the power play, you know, you have to start all over again. And, and so, you know, obviously they're going to talk about their power play and, and, you know, tweak things a little bit and simplify it, whatever the case may be. But, but you know, you had some guys that really, you know, were really strong tonight. You know, I look at 
I look, look, look at Pitlick. I, I, I look at Brodzinski. Oliver Moore with a beautiful play. You know, um, Brody Lamb, you know, just showing his strength. Jackson Nelson and, you know, Mason Nevers. Guys like that, they were just, you know, they, they all had had really good games tonight. And the fourth line, how many how many opportunities? What do you want your fourth line to do? Well, you don't want to spin it in your own end. You want to spin it, you know, in the offensive end. They did that tonight. Strobel with a great pass to Pitlick on, on that goal. So, overall, you know, I, I think... Uh, I think when you look at this game, they're going to be pretty happy uh, with with how everything turned out. Wouldn't be surprised to see these lines again tomorrow. Our final stats brought to you by your local Toyota dealers, proud sponsors of Gopher Athletics. Toyota, let's go places. I mean, you look at look at UMD at 24 block shots. You know, they're going to look at that. I you know, think they did a, a, a pretty good job. Minnesota 14, but you know, only 15 shots on goal tonight for the Bulldogs, and that. You know, something that they're going to have to try to rectify if they want to beat Minnesota tomorrow night. Brett Pitlick scored his first of the year tonight. 17th career goal. He's with us now. How bad did you want that goal? Yeah, it definitely <laughs> felt good, and it feels like the monkey's off the back. Now. I saw you about uh, probably about 15 seconds earlier. You were slapping your stick down, and, and you know, wanting after you guys had hit two pipes, but uh, you played a heck of a game tonight. Great play on the on the Cal Thomas goal, and then you uh, out muscling a guy in the offensive zone and, and creating an opportunity. What was it, what was it with you tonight? Yeah, I appreciate that. I think it was a collective team effort tonight, and everyone's high energy allowed me to have a high energy, and I think we all worked off worked really well off each other. So thank you. Okay, one thing that wasn't good tonight was the power play. Is it a matter of of, of forcing things, being a little frustrated? What what do you what are you seeing uh, with your lack of production as a team on the power play? Yeah, I think we just got to get the reps in. I know it's there, but I think tonight, you know. There might have been some uh, trouble with it, but in practice, we'll keep working on it and we'll get better for sure. All right, here's the deal. You just keep doing what you're doing because it's awfully fun to watch. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Rhett. Thank you. Rhett Pitlick, one of the many stars tonight for the Gophers. Tomorrow on Fox 9 Plus, Pat, you'll be in Duluth as the Gophers go for the sweep at Amsoil. We'll be back here as well on November 17th and 18th on Fox 9 and Fox 9 Plus against Notre Dame. Coming up next on Fox 9, it's Fox 9 News. For Pat Nicoletti, I'm Sam Ekstrom saying so long from 3 Marina at Mariucci.